Hi everybody and welcome on my channel. In today's video I will be showing you how to flash the beta flight 4.5 firmware on your flight controller in a complete walkthrough FPV video tutorial. The tutorial will be divided in three sections. First part is about important preliminary steps to undertake before the flashing. In the second part, I will be showing you some methods on how to get your flight controller in DF4 mode, which allows the firmware to be written on the flight controller. And lastly, the actual process of flashing the firmware. Let's begin. Okay, first thing we do is to go into the CLI tab and type version. And here we can see that the firmware is at 4.4.3 version. And we might need to take a note of this, just in case if the new firmware has some problem and we want to go back to the previous one. That's the one we, the original version, let's say. And most importantly, we need to take note of the board name which in my case is PDB F405 V3. And we need this name when we go to flash the firmware because we need to choose the target and that's the target name we need. Okay, so we can exit this one and we go back to the CLI tab and if you have a um, flight controller already configured, like mine, so we need to save all of these settings, right? So what we do is to type dump. And this one is all the settings of the flight controller, every single thing. So what we want to do after we type dump and we get all of this information is to save to file. Click here. I usually have a folder for my presets. So this one is the Apex Evo 5. And I've already made a folder with dump, name dump file with PID tune and the date of today. And I'm going to save this file right here. Before we go ahead, I would just want to double check if the file has been saved. And here it is, perfect. Okay, we can exit this page. And basically that's it for the first part. It's time now to get the flight controller in DF mode. And as far as I'm aware, there are four ways of getting the flight controller in DF DFU mode. And the first one is the classic way, which is to press and hold the boot button on the flight controller and then plug the USB in. And as you can see, the flight controller goes in DFU mode. Disconnect. The second method I know is to just plug the flight controller normally in the setup page. I'm pretty sure everyone has seen. You can click on this one, activate bootloader slash DFU and reboots and the flight controller goes in DFU mode. Disconnect again. The third method I know is to connect the flight controller. Okay, get out of the page. And let's run in Bulls RC. And here, the flight controller goes in TF4 mode. Can cross this one, TF4 mode. And the last way I know is again, sorry, disconnect, connect normally. Let's open the better flight. Go down to CLI tab and type BL, which stands for bootloader. Click on enter and automatically the flight controller goes in DF4 mode. 
If for some reason none of these ways work for you, just make sure that the drivers are installed. Those two drivers, CP210 and the Zedic, I guess, driver. And uh, these are necessary if you are running Betaflight on a Windows laptop or computer. Okay, it's time now to flash the firmware. Okay, here we are in the firmware flasher. Flight control is DFU mode. And choose a board. Here we need to put the board name, the one we saw in the CLI tab at the beginning. And in my case, it's the SpeedyB F405 V3, which is this one. And I'm going to go with the 4.5.0 and leave these settings as they are. And down here, before we go ahead, we need to make sure what uh, receiver, video transmitter we got on board. Because if, if we mess up something here, then we are going to have problem when we are going to about to configure the flight controller. So since I have a crossfire uh, receiver, as a radio protocol, I need crossfire. Same thing if you have a ELRS receiver, you need to choose crossfire as radio protocol. And keep this one. In all the options, I'm going to get rid of Acro Trainer. I got a GPS and I'm going to leave the GPS on. I got LED strips and I just need the OST digital and VTX. Uh, just remember, back in the days, the, whenever uh, we tried to flash a firmware, everything was going to be installed. But nowadays, it's, things have changed. So that's the reason why you see this uh, section in a way you choose what you need only rather than getting everything installed in the firmware. So if you have, for example, a compass together with your GPS, you just click in this field and select mag magnetometer or anything else you need. If you have a servo, if it's not a drone or if it's something else or whatever. So anyway, you find everything in here. Okay. And telemetry protocol we leave as it is in automatically included and this shot will live uh, for the motor protocol okay so we are ready we load the firmware online we wait for this one to get ready and we are now ready to flash the firmware okay by the time the flashing process is done. If you found this video useful, some good information, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing, leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions. Okay, the flashing is in progress. Won't take the long to finish. Okay. Flashing has been done. We get this warning, the accelerometer is enabled, but it's not calibrated. So what we need to do, we just close this one, make sure the drone is on a surface nice and flat. And we click here on calibrate accelerometer. And also reset Z axis. Okay. Okay, we go to the last part of the video. Okay, now in the last part, we go back to the CLI tab. We click version to make sure that the new version has been installed. And here we can see version 4.5.0 and port name. And now we can uh, upload the dump file we previously saved before the flashing. So just click on load from file. And here we are 
already done file with PID June 17625. Yep. Select. Open. Okay. Execute. A few errors actually. Okay. What are this? So it looks like some names have changed or been removed. So that's why we get this error. Set us DGFC. Okay, this one I know the name has been changed recently. And that's one. Set SDR useful bit with of say GPS U block small a bore this one in doesn't exist anymore I guess I got see it looks so right oh no DMA SPM also unknown. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, let's save the file. Hey, sorry, not save the file. We save here, type save, and now, since we've got some errors, <clears throat> we need to fly test the drone to see how it goes. And actually, before fly test, review all of the settings and see if something looks all right or not. But it's a good example. If uh, something is not working after a while flying testing the drone, so we know the previous firmware which was so we can go back to the firmware reload the dump file and we have the drone flying as it used to be anyway click so on save and port c configuration as it used to be this one, fail safe, PID tuning, yep, okay, this is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching, and subscribe, comment, like the video, and we will see you at the next one, bye-bye.